What's going on? My name is Tori Pell. I go by the name of the Artistic Assassin. I'm currently 38 years old from Carbondale, Illinois. Small town, college town. Um, I still got into art. I've been into art my whole life. Got into it seriously when I was about 12 years old. I remember I got in trouble. I got into it with a teacher in the eighth grade. Um, said something to me, I ended up slamming her door and uh, I shattered the glass. So my old man, who was a federal prison guard at the time at Marion Penitentiary, put me on punishment, took everything, cell, took my phone, video games, no outside, nothing. You know, at that time, that's when you get into grills and everything. But the only thing he didn't take from me was my um, was my art supplies. So from that point on, I was serious about art. And at that time, during that time, I was studying like Todd McFarlane. I was heavy into the comic books, Todd McFarlane and all that. And from that time on, I just blossomed and blossomed and blossomed. So comic books was my thing at that point in time. And, uh, and my style reflected that. Like I said, um, I come from a wide range of artists. My mother could draw real good, I had an aunt that could draw real good, but I got a cousin named Alfred that was just a monster growing up. So like I said, I always drew. So I remember one summer it was me, him, and one of my other little cousins, little Reggie, sitting around. And my mother just got a job, uh, um, she um, just got a job as a doctor's secretary at SIU University, meaning she has her own office. So, you know, you can draw, you know, your mom like, draw something I can put on the wall. So I drew some little Bart Simpson character, you know, cool, whatever. You know, I was proud of it. Then my cousin over here draws this basketball court. This dude get dunked on detail. I mean, we like 11 and 12 years old, detail, palm trees, everything, cold. Uh, the back, the skyline, cold. Then he draws his name with a top hat and a cane, and he gives it to my mom. And my mother was like, this is great. She like, baby, yours is nice too. So that turned the, I was a beast from then on, but at the same time, I watched my cousin. I asked him to give me pointers. I sometimes he'll draw something and I'll copy it. You know what I'm saying? So I can learn the line quality and everything. Some people just had it naturally. I was a person that had to work on it. Till this day, I still have to work on certain things. Then I had another good friend named Brandon um, um, growing up. Brandon Mason, uh, cold, cold. Uh, he spent a lot of his time, you know, he was dibbling down with rap and everything. Art drawing was the last thing on his mind. Last thing on my mind. So I used to ask him, man, draw this for me, draw that. He's like, he'll scribble some. All right, man, go practice that. And I was grateful for it. I'll practice drawing that or some of a comic book and it's to and just go from there. So I had people, so that I, it was always somebody that played a role in me getting better, you know, studying other artists, either even though they weren't somebody who took it seriously. But in my eyes, they were somebody great because, you know, their style influenced me. So, yeah, so it was always, I always had some kind of influence. Somebody older, a little bit younger. It's a control thing sometimes with art, man, and um, some of the mediums you have to use. Some people have better control with paint, uh, chalk, minus this pencil. Um, it's just something, it was one of the first things, on, when I, like I said earlier, I was on punishment. All I had was a pencil and an eraser, and I just stuck with it. You know, it's just the control, and like, like I said, I, the way I can manipulate it, and the way I can bring work to life, you know? And sometimes the way my style is, a lot of people, it's not they can't do, it's just not done. And um, sometimes when you see my work, you think it's painting and everything. And so when you get those compliments and everything, I just stuck with it, and I just got great at it. Artists that inspired me, um, it's a wide range, not just Chicago artists, it's artists all over, but as far as like Chicago or Illinois period, it would you know, definitely be for like for everybody else, Hebrew, uh, Kadar Nelson, and, uh, and Wack. Uh, Wack, I love him for, for the simple fact what he's, the story he's telling. He's telling, he's educating, at the same time as his art, he's educating young kids about what's, what we've been through and what we're coming up on and what we have overcome for the kids, who, for people who don't know. Kadar Nelson, um, he has like that, uh, the art you saw in good times, that's his style. And that's kind of like, um, I take my style from when I tell a story. He did a piece on Marvin Gaye that was huge and it told his whole story. And I've just been a fan ever since. And I see some, like my style somewhat reflects that. Then you have Hebrew, who, who can't, who, who can you say? 
he influences everything in Chicago right now. Zeff Farm Boy, Zeff, he, I've been watching Zeff Farm Boy since when he was a dude walking um, down Michigan Avenue in the hundreds with a big afro. Uh, I remember watching him, he did this piece of, uh, I wanna say Mob Deep when I was, when he was a kid. We, uh, I used to spend my summers on his block and, I, and him and my cousin, were, they were friends. I used to see his work he used to do. And I was drawing in, but I was nowhere near as good as that. I was looking out at out, out of magazines, trying to draw what I saw. But every time I saw his work, it was monstrous. And now, he, as t to this day, he still is one of my big, big, one of the big artists that inspired me, probably the most, um, that inspires me the most, is Zeph Farm Boy. One thing about Chicago art I noticed, um, everybody, everybody pays some kind of homage, either it's to for where they're from, or for the per, or the person who they've been studying, or um, cause like you said, I see a lot of kids now they're doing stuff they grew up on. So you see the cartoons like with Ren and Stimpy, or you see the Simpsons, or some way, but then you see how the neighborhood they're 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 from. You know, you'll see somewhat humble park of Pilsen somewhere inside there. Um, or you'll see somebody from Pullman or from the hundreds or from out south somewhere in that work somewhere. And then you'll see, once again, you see somewhere of Hebrew in there. You know, um, it's, and that's what I like about Chicago. It's always homage being paid and it's always a story being told about where they came from and within their art. When I put an art piece together, man, a lot of the times it's a story being told of what's going on. A lot of the times, like me, um, me being in law enforcement and I doing security work, sometimes I see stuff and I put it in my work. Like uh, I used to do a lot of security over east, like in the South Shore area. And I ended up doing a piece of a young man holding, he had some boxing gloves. And I was in the piece, I was showing his trials and tribulations that he uh, faces as a young black man. And what I was doing, I was painting the picture of what I saw every day when I was doing security work around the South Shore area, around 71st and Jeffrey. And I put it in that picture showing that sometimes a lot of these kids aren't born, they don't have a chance when they come into this world. And I showed the trials tribulations that he came through to get to a successful um, successful part of his life. Um, so basically, yeah, so basically what's, like, what's going on in today, in the everyday world is where I find my inspiration. So from the kids, everywhere from the kids, to my barber, to my wife, and everything, work, my, my regular nine to five, is where I find my inspiration for my art. I got three kings at home. My, uh, my youngest, he's like to scribble all over everything, and he has scribbled on some of my art, but the, but the client loved it. So I say, so I can say we got a piece out there together right now. Um, my middle, my middle and my oldest, you know, I had them painting for a while. They were into it and they were good at it. But you know, sometimes, you know, they just want to get into something else. But they do have somewhat of an eye for it. You know, they know what's quality and what's quantity. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Cause the, cause their mother's an artist as well too. Trust your style. Trust your style your techniques, everything. One thing with me, man, when I was in college, man, I had a teacher do everything he could to flunk me. He told me my stuff, my stuff was incomplete, wasn't good enough, it wasn't that, it was too tattooish, it's too graffitiish. All right, that's art, you know? It start, it's stirring up an emotion, it's causing some kind of conflict because me and you are arguing over it. So I tell a person, stay true to yourself. Just keep working on your craft, day in and day out, because something will come of it. So, my big influence, like some of my big influences, the city of Chicago, the best city in the world by far. Just sitting on the curb and just watching everything, you can just sit on the curb and you can just get inspiration from right there. Anything from the music, like right now the hip hop scene is great. You know what I'm saying? You have all different kinds of flavors. That plays into my art. Like right now I listen to, I listen to a raw range of everything. Like I love Griselda. Conway, West Side, Benny. But at the same time, I love Saba, uh, I love St. Mary, I love Fillmore, I like Ju Jill. It's a lot of people here. It's a lot of art, it's a lot of hip hop that I listen to that plays a role into my art too. And everything, and then sometimes I go back and I listen to Marvin Gaye, listen to Curtis, and you can see that in my art too. Um, Chance, uh, Common, all that. KRS-One. 
that plays it right, you know, it's like I said. And like, um, I started a series called uh, Bang, by Art Not Guns. And that's uh, also a reflection of what I see every day when I was doing security and I'm a um, prison guard. So, you know, you have a lot of guys in there and they, you know, some of them, they open up to me. You know, like I said, some of them don't have a chance. But, you know, maybe some of me taking the negative and trying to flip into a positive, like some of the work I see, I might see a picture like Tumblr, you see a lot of pictures on there. People got the dirty, you got the, the, the methazine mixed with the Sprite and everything with a nine with extended clip. So what I do, let me draw a Nerf gun right here with something else. You know, show you that it's cool to be, you know, it's cool to turn down the, the it's cool to turn it down a little bit. You know, be a regular dude, be a nerd and everything. You know, that's the message that also I try to preach for the people that are all looking at my work. You can talk, even though we're from a rough city, right now, still the best city in the world, but you can still turn it down, enjoy yourself, be a nerd, be who you really want to be. The tough guy stuff, you ain't always got to, you always don't have to carry around with you. If I go to a gallery, I could be there all day. Like I said, with my style being realism, naturalism and everything, so I, me personally, I love stuff that tells a story. So if I can go see, find another artist who might be from somewhere different from me, you know, that'd be great too. I always want to learn about somebody else whose the, who's background or surroundings of living is different from mine on my own. Um, but like I said, but music wise, you know, I like, uh, I like the jazz, you know, jazz, old soul, blue eyes soul, everything, you know. So that plays a role into my day-to-day -day life because sometimes when you sit in the lab, you need something to listen to. And, and sometimes you might not walk in and hear what you think you might hear from me. You might hear some jazz or you might hear some old soul or something. Me to get into this, the, uh, where I am today with my art, I feel like I am because I learned from other artists, not from school or anything, from other artists being around me, trying to get to where I am. Like I said, some of my good close friends, my roommate in college, somebody I owe a lot to because he set up with me. He'll tell me how to use this material when you shouldn't do what you should do. I felt like he was my college professor because he kept it 100 with me and he showed me how to get better in a lot of aspects. My first goal with art is to quit my job, right, which I am into law enforcement, which is a good career because I'm able to take care of my family, you know, and do certain things for my family, but that's not the goal, I, that's not what I want to do in my life. My art is my main goal. Uh, so hopefully one day this could take me so I don't need my regular nine to five. Um, also with my art, you know, if something happens, I want something to be able to lead to my kids. You know, they can have this to show, you know, what their father was and what, what my father was out here trying to teach while he was here on the earth. Um, also with my art, you know, this spread something, this, this, this a message period with my art.